Being able to shoot and have somebody else pay for it or being a sponsored shooter is the ultimate dream for many shooters across the world. And there have always been a very small core contingent of actual professional shooters who were full-time sponsored. I recently had the pleasure to sit down and interview Saul Kirsch and talk about this very thing, about sponsored shooters and how new media has affected the ability for shooters to gain sponsorship. Just like the music industry with technology lowering the barriers to entry, with social media everybody goes on there and posts their shooting content. So the drive to have like the big name top competitive shooters in the world isn't necessarily as ideal as having somebody who's got a lot of eyeballs following what they do online. Saul Kirsch being a former sponsored shooter and now a sponsor of sponsored shooters talks about the environment in which we're currently operating. If you want to hear more from this interview with Saul Kirsch, there's a link in the description to my podcast featuring a full over an hour long conversation with Saul on a whole host of topics ranging from gear, the development of gear, the formation of Double Alpha, and what it's like being a practical shooter sort of all over the world. But for now, let's talk about being a sponsored shooter. I kind of touched on something which was kind of my last question, and that's, well, it's really two questions, two parts. So uh, the first question is sponsored shooters. Going back to the I was in the same boat you were. It's like, wow, I want to do a lot more of this shooting. And as I learned about sponsor shooting, saw the fancy shooting blouses everyone was wearing. And how has that changed considering on social media, to your point, everybody's got a platform and is more than happy to go and buy their own jersey with everybody's logos that they like on them and then tag them in all the media posts. Like, how has that really changed? Like, you guys sponsor shooters. I'm sure you probably have a dozen or more throughout the world. What's it like to be a company with with this social media environment that we have as far as sponsor shooters are concerned? Yeah, I mean, it's a really an interesting situation. And for me, I know it personally from both ends of the stick. You know, I spent years being the sponsored shooter who, uh, you know, had to go find companies and sell myself to them and say, you know, it's worth your while to support me. Um, and today I'm the company supporting those shooters. And we do sponsor uh shooters as individuals as well as a lot of events and matches around the world and we get a ton of requests i mean i probably get half a dozen emails a week on average an email a day on average would would probably be be normal from shooters saying you know i'm a shooter sponsor me and it's a little bit of a chicken and egg kind of situation because you do need support in many cases in order to get good and i've seen a lot of shooters over the years that have all that had all the talent and focus and motivation they didn't have the money and you need the money if you want to be a world-class shooter you need to be shooting 50 60 80 100 000 rounds a year and you need to be competing at a minimum of maybe eight or ten major competitions a year which means you have to travel and travel is expensive so if you have no money behind you if you don't if you're not lucky enough to come from a wealthy family it's a real problem. And I've seen more than a few shooters come to an end because they just couldn't take that next step and they couldn't get the money. And the problem was at that point in their shooting career, they weren't good enough to be sponsored. They didn't have the achievements yet. And we still have that same problem now as a company looking to sponsor shooters. There's no justification to take somebody who's never won a nationals or who's never placed in the Europeans or has never won at least his local national championships and say, we want to support you, uh, especially over someone else, because the achievements are not yet there. So it's very much a chicken and egg kind of situation for a lot of these shooters. And of course, the other issue is, as a company, what kind of return can you really expect from your sponsorship expenditure? And it's quite significant when you look at the advertising budget. You know, if we sponsor a professional shooter, it may cost us some real money during the year. Is it paying back? You never really know that for sure. You know, and there's this very funny joke about advertising, which says, I know half of my advertising works. I just don't know which half. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. and that's a that's a real problem in advertising because you spend a lot of money and it's sometimes very difficult to quantify. You know, partly the option of online advertising has made that worse for sponsored shooters because online advertising actually does let you see how well your advertising is working. You can see conversions. You can see exactly I've spent a thousand dollars, it generated five thousand dollars. You know, you can you can quantify it quite accurately. But when you look at spending money on printed ads or on sponsored shooters or on sponsoring a stage at a world shoot. You know, these are expensive things. One stage at a world shoot can cost you $10,000. And then you go, well, was it worth it? 
you don't know. You do it in part because you want to support the sport. You do it in part because you want to see the sport move forward and develop. You have an interest in that as well commercially. But it's hard to quantify how effective it is. And for the sponsored shooters, when you want to sell yourself, you know, as a professional shooter or as a wannabe professional shooter to a company, you really have to make an effort to present yourself in a way where you're about what can I do for you? These are the benefits that I can bring to you as a sponsored shooter. I think earlier it was if you can win the world shoot, if you're good enough to be ranked amongst the top in the world, you're sponsorship worthy. But truthfully, we have shooters today who are not top five or six in the world. They might be 15th or 20 or 25th in the world. And they worth a lot more to us than a shooter who might be fifth in the world because they can do more promoting our products on social media than the other guy does just because they're better at that. you know. And I'll never forget a story Max Michelle told me we were talking about exactly this. And he said to me, you know, he was meeting with a potential sponsor at SHOT Show, trying to get a deal with another company. And he said, I'm Max Michelle, 10 times US national champion, world champion, you know, and I want to be associated. And, you know, he was, he was doing the thing. And the uh, sales manager or the sponsorship guy there says, well, you know, you see that girl there who's signing all those posters in our booth, you know, she's got 500,000 followers on Instagram. How many do you have? And then it's kind of a question, well, you know, if you want to be a professional sponsored shooter, what's more important, that you are a great shooter who's a multi-time national champion or that you are a persona who has 500,000 followers on social media? It's a sad day, in my opinion, that we're heading to a point where that person, man or woman, who has a million followers or 200, you know, or hundreds of thousands of followers and an influencer online actually may have more value to a business to sponsor than a world-class champion shooter. I think that's a shame in a way because I think the champion shooters who invest all that time and effort and sweat, they deserve the sponsorship, you know, to keep pushing the limit and moving the sport forward. It's not about posting on Instagram. It's about shooting better. It's about, you know, pushing the sport to its limit and there's a disconnect there that's that's been created by social media, and it's definitely something that's, uh, I think, just getting worse, and certainly in recent years has accelerated. Mm-hmm.